Shalom. Greetings. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean. Website can be found at scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives, and that's where you go to support this mission of truth. Well, for the rest of this week, we're going to be observing or commemorating, if you will, the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. And I have uh, l- three or four different studies I'd like to get uh, uploaded this week. And um has to do, so today would be Exodus chapter 19 and 20, uh, a reading from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of Jubilees, uh, the Book of Ruth, and then, of course, the Pentecost story from the Book of Acts. All of this dealing with the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. First, let's talk about what Shavuot is. And uh, Root Awakening actually has a really great little write-up. Uh, and so I'm going to read that to you this morning uh, to kind of set the stage for uh, the meaning of Feast of Weeks and the purpose and the fulfillment and and all of that. So let's have a look at that first. Here's the article from A Rude Awakening. Rude Awakening. The fire, the thunder, the awesome voice of the Almighty Himself delivering the Ten Commandments. And that was just the first Shavuot. On this same day in history, the mighty rushing wind of the Holy Spirit was given to Yeshua's disciples in Jerusalem. That's why Shavuot is also known as Pentecost. It is the anniversary of both events, the inseparable bond between the Torah and the Spirit. And I think that's a, that's a great uh, little description. Uh, It goes on to say that Shavuot in Hebrew is a word that means weeks and is called as such because we are to count seven weeks up to the day of Shavuot from the day of first fruits, the morrow after Yeshua rose from the dead. The day of first fruits is the period of the spring barley harvest and Shavuot is the period of the wheat harvest. It is common among Torah observant believers to mark each day during this period the counting of the Omer, 49 days up to the 50th day of the count, which is actually the day of Shavuot. The Omer is the unit of measure used in the Bible, and as the context refers to the measure of barley used in the wave offering on the day of first fruits. Interestingly, While most Hebrew festivals fall on different days of the week from year to year, Shavuot always is celebrated on a Sunday, the first day of the week. This happens because the 50-day counting of the Omer that commences on the day of the first fruits always starts on a Sunday, the morrow after the Sabbath. So, um... You, you're basically you're counting 50 days from first fruits to get to Shavuot or to get to Pentecost. Um, and in fact, the meaning of the word Pentecost means 50 in Greek. That's where that's coming from. So that's what's interesting is even in uh, even in Christianity, we have the word Pentecost, which we know what that day is, right? We know it's the day that the Holy Spirit came down upon the disciples. But many do not understand that that's the exact same day that was called the Feast of Weeks and was commanded to be observed in the Torah. And that there's the counting of the Omer, the 50 days leading up to Pentecost, and the word Pentecost itself even means 50. And yet we're so ignorant about these things uh, as a collective group. as uh, The church is extraordinarily ignorant about the Feast of God, the Feast of Jehovah, the Moedim, the appointed times. Even though the early Christians, the early Gentile Christians still referred to it as Pentecost, meaning 50. I, I, I'm just baffled sometimes how these things have gotten lost. Okay. 
So the tradition is that the very first Shavuot was at Mount Sinai when the law was given. Although the book of Jubilees from the Dead Sea Scrolls begs to differ. We'll look at that uh, tomorrow, Lord willing. But the book of Jubilees seems to think that this, the first is uh, at, right after the flood. Right after the flood of Noah. Interestingly enough. So we'll look at that tomorrow. We'll look at that story tomorrow. Uh, the flood of Noah and Shavuot. The feast itself is mentioned by name in that story. And so we'll be looking at that, uh, Lord willing, tomorrow. So the fulfillment, if we're going to look at the feast and how they're fulfilled by Messiah... Obviously, the fulfillment of Shavuot is the tongues of fire that appeared above the heads of the disciples who were gathered uh, that you can read about in Acts chapter 2. And so, anyway, the last thing I'll mention is, just like Feast of Trumpets, Shavuot is one of those feasts that many uh, speculate could be the time in which uh, Messiah returns and the people are gathered to himself. And the reason is, is because we have similar language when we read the story at Mount Sinai about, you know, they go up the mount to God. There's a big trumpet blast, like all of that takes place in this story. So it still could be prophetic yet. Um, Okay. That's enough rambling. Let's read our story for today. Uh, We're going to look at Exodus chapter 19 and 20 today. We're going to read about the story of the giving of the law. And I just pray that you would open up your hearts and that this would speak to you this morning. I know we've read this a thousand times on this podcast. And I could have very easily just re-uploaded one of the billion times that I've already done it. But I just wanted to go through it again because it's one of my favorite stories in all the scriptures. I'm reading from the Hallelujah Scriptures this morning. Open up your hearts, and let's begin. In the third month, after the children of Yisrael had come out of the land of Mitzrayim, that is to say, Egypt, on this day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. But they departed from Raphadim, and had come to the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. So Yisrael camped before the mountain. And Moshe went up to Elohim. And Jehovah called to him from the mountain, saying, This is what you are to say to the house of Yaakov, that is to say Jacob, and declare to the children of Yisrael, You have seen what I did to the Mistrites, how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. And now, if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a reign of Kohanim, that is to say, priest, and a Kodesh nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Yisrael. Please note, You know, I love to point out all the ifs in the Bible because people try to act like there's no conditions with God ever. (laughs) Uh, Not true. But I just want us to realize how important it is to God that his people trust and obey him. He says, now, if you will diligently, he doesn't just say, if you will obey my voice, right? Right? If you will do it while it's convenient. If you will follow my ways as long as it fits into your schedule. No, he says, and now if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. Continuing on. Verse 7, And Moshe came and called to the elders of the people, and put before them all these words which Jehovah commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, 
and all that Jehovah has spoken we shall do. So Moshe brought back the words of the people to Jehovah. And Jehovah said to Moshe, See, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, so that the people hear when I speak with you and believe forever. And Moshe reported the words of the people to Jehovah. And Jehovah said to Moshe, Go to the people, Kadesh them today and tomorrow, and they shall wash their garments, and shall be prepared for the third day. For on the third day Jehovah shall come down upon Mount Sinai before the eyes of all the people. And you shall make a border for the people all around, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you do not go up to the mountain or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall certainly be put to death. Not a hand is to touch it, but he shall certainly be stoned or shot with an arrow. Whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, Let them go up to the mountain. So please note, there's that language. When the trumpet sounds long, go up. Right? And that's what we read in in Thessalonians. There'll be the, the great trumpet of God continuing on. And Moshe came down from the mountain to the people and Kadesh the people. And they washed their garments, and he said to the people, Be prepared by the third day. Do not come near a wife. And it came to be on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain, and the sound of the ram's horn was very loud. And all the people who were in the camp trembled. Try to understand this. And it may be like this at the return of Christ as well. They're at the mountain, and there's this extremely loud trumpet blast coming from the heavens. The people are terrified now. I wonder, will the whole world hear the trumpet of God at the return of Messiah? Some believe that it's an act, that it's the rapture. It's all the same thing. Will the people tremble? What will it sound like? Continuing on. So the sound of the ram's horn was very loud, and all the people who were in the camp trembled, and Moshe brought the people out to the camp to meet with Elohim, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. And Mount Sinai was in smoke, all of it, because Jehovah descended upon it in fire. And its smoke went up like the smoke of a furnace, and all the mountain trembled exceedingly. And when the blast of the ram's horn sounded long and became very strong, Moshe spoke, and Elohim answered him by voice. Okay, Uh, please note. So you got the big loud trumpet, the ground is shaking, the mountain is shaking, the mountain is on fire, and smoke is rolling off of it like a furnace, and then they hear the literal, audible voice of God. And Jehovah came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain, and Jehovah called Moshe to the top of the mountain, and Moshe went up. And Jehovah said to Moshe, Go down, warn the people, lest they break through unto Jehovah to see, and many of them fall. And let the Kohanim who come near Jehovah kodesh themselves too, lest Jehovah break out against them. And Moshe said to Jehovah, The people are not able to come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, Make a border around the mountain and kodesh it. And Jehovah said to him, Come, go down, and then come up, you and Aaron with you. But do not let the Kohanim and the people break through to come up to Jehovah, lest he break out against them. Moshe went down to the people and spoke to them. Chapter 20 And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Jehovah your Elohim who brought you out of the land of Mizraim and out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself carved images or any likeness of that which is in the Shemayim above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them for I, Jehovah, your Elohim, am a jealous El. 
visiting the wickedness of the fathers and the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing kindness to the thousands and to those who love me and guard my commandments. You do not bring the name of Jehovah your Elohim to naught, for Jehovah does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Remember the Sabbath day to Gadosh it. Six days you labor and you shall do your work, but on the seventh day it is a Sabbath of Jehovah your Elohim. You do not do any work, you nor your son nor your daughters nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle nor the stranger within your gates. For in six days Jehovah made the Shemayim and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, Jehovah Barak, that is to say, bless the Shabbat day and Kadosh it. Respect your father and your mother so that your days are prolonged upon the earth which the land which Jehovah your Elohim is giving you. By the way, this is one of the few commandments that comes with a promise. Respect your father and your mother so that your days are prolonged upon the land which Jehovah your Elohim is giving you. So you honor your parents, even if they don't deserve honor. You honor them as your as a commandment from God. And it's mentioned more than once in the scriptures. Long life to those who do that. That doesn't mean you have to remain in a relationship with toxic parents or abusive parents or anything like that. It's just about your posture towards them. Verse 13, you do not murder. You do not commit adultery. You do not steal. You do not bear false witness against your neighbor. You do not covet your neighbor's house. You do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. And all the people saw the thunders and lightnings and flashes and the sound of the ram's horn and the mountains smoking, and the people saw it, and they trembled, and they stood at a distance and said to Moshe, You speak with us, and we hear, but let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. Please note, it, you don't realize how unholy you are, how deserving of death you are, until you're in the presence of God. We saw that with the prophet Isaiah, right? Woe is me, he says, I'm undone. I live amongst the people of unclean lips. The people are seeing the lightning and the thunder and the earthquakes and they're hearing the audible voice of God and this trumpet sound that's shaking the whole earth coming from the heavens and they realize just how small they really are. And they're like, we can't even hear, we can't even be in this presence and hear these things. We're going to die just from the voice of God. <laughs> you know, Moses, you go talk to God. We'll talk to you and you go talk to God. Like, be the mediator. Which is prophetic, right? Who's our mediator now? Our Messiah, of course. And they said to Moshe, You speak with us, and we hear, but let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moshe said to the people, Do not fear, for Elohim's come to prove you. And in order that his reverence be before you so that you do not sin, why did God appear before the people and put on this amazing display of his authority and power? As if they hadn't already seen it with the Dead Sea and all the plagues and all that. But here now, they're hearing him. There's no question that he is the one true God, the only God. It's so they do not sin. What is the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Why? Because that fear is what keeps you from going astray. If you have a casual attitude towards sin, you don't fear God, which means wisdom is not in you. 
All of this was so that they would not have an excuse. And so that they would tremble at the idea of offending a righteous and holy God. So the people stood at a distance. But Moshe drew near the dense cloud where Elohim was, and Jehovah said to Moshe, Say this to the children of Israel. You yourselves have seen that I have spoken to you from the Shemayim. You do not make besides me mighty ones of silver, and you do not make mighty ones of gold for yourselves. Make an altar of the earth before me, and you shall slaughter it on your burnt offerings, and your peace offerings, and your sheep, and your cattle. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I shall come to you and bless you. And if you make me an altar of stone, do not build it of cut stone. For if you use your chisel on it, you have profaned it. Nor do you go up by steps to my altar, lest your nakedness be exposed on it. And so that is our story for this morning. Our first story in our observance of the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. No matter how many times I read that story, I can't help but just be enthusiastic about it. It never gets old. It never ceases to draw me in. And I pray that it's the same with all of you. I mean, it's probably the second or third time you've heard it this year, just from my podcast alone. But I pray that you've been blessed as a result. It's an important story. It's one that should be embedded in all of our hearts. People think that the commandments of God don't matter today. Let me ask you, is it still a sin to murder? Of course. Is it still a sin to covet your neighbor's wife? Of course. Is adultery still a sin? Of course. The commandments still matter. John says this is how we know that we love God, that we observe his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That's the Apostle John. What Jesus say? You think lust is bad. Or you think adultery. You think, no, 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 no. I tell you that if you even look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery with her in your heart already. If anything, Jesus made it more clear what these sins are and raised the bar, if anything. If you hate your brother, you've committed murder. What? What did God say? If you will diligently, diligently obey my commandments. Let's not have a casual attitude towards God and towards sin. Rather, let's do the opposite. Let's be zealous for his word. Let's be zealous for the things he's asked us to do. They're not grievous. It's our great privilege to be the children of God, to be separated from the rest of this wicked world. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like this world. I pray you've been blessed this morning. Lord willing, I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning. We're going to read from the book of Jubilees and read that story of Noah and Shavuot. It's all in the same reading. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.